Hello and welcome back to the New York Virtual Photo Salon. I'm Lavon Hall, your host for this event. Thanks for tuning in last time, but if you haven't seen last week's episode and the rest of our awesome speakers, click on the links in the description. I'm super thrilled to have one of our very own committee gurus, Bill Westheimer, as our guest for this evening. As a photographer and sculptor, he takes photography to a different level of creativity. Leave us comments, subscribe, and like this channel. Now sit back and enjoy the show. Thanks for watching. Thanks, LaVon. Hey, everyone. I'm excited to share some of my recent work in the virtual photo salon. Look forward to the day that we can all meet in real life. But in the meantime, here we go. Um, I had a grandmother who was rather prim and stuffy, and she used to say, I always have more fun saying yes than saying no. So when LaVon asked me to present my stuff, well, there was just one possible answer. I'm going to show you some of the imaginary landscapes from my Borderlands series and some of the imaginary fossils from my Anthropocene series. The fossils are of plants and animals that might have existed in those landscapes. The Borderlands work is presented quite large, usually eight feet wide. I've been working on it for over five years and finally feel I've gotten to uh, almost being done. I have a lot more pieces that I've selected and started to work on, but that will take some more time. People often ask me, where do your ideas come from? And it's probably an innocent question but maybe it's an indirect way to ask if I'm crazy. The answer to both is, I don't know. What I do know, though, is that many of the best ideas that have occurred to me were not what I intended or planned or thought I wanted to do. Ideas have come to me unexpectedly, unasked, unplanned. I was an innocent and naive child of the 1950s. And as such, I was naturally open and accepting and was often rewarded. It's helped me learn and grow and be creative in ways I never expected. And these borderlands landscapes are sort of like that. Uh, I started on them when I was looking through hundreds of scans of wet plate collodion negatives that I've shot over the past 19 years of working with collodion. Every plate when you work in collodion, every plate has a distinctive corner where your thumb holds the glass as you, as you coat it with the collodion. I thought that those collodion thumbprints of mine would make a great series of unconventional self-portraits. But when I reviewed them, I realized the visuals weren't any good. I, I did discover, however, that the edges of the plates are amazing. There on the edges, on the borders, I found the artifacts of the handmade process. They are mistakes and defects, and when they're enlarged, they look like landscapes. It's especially gratifying to transform the mistakes into something good. So I reviewed hundreds of collodion images from other projects and appropriated the edges of my own images for the new series. Then I adjusted the gradations and the colors in Photoshop to come up with the final images. Since they aren't real, I wasn't constrained to show exactly what the edges looked like. I merged files, added colors, used my imagination. And the titles are appropriations of real place names. Since each imaginary landscape doesn't exist, I wanted the names to be real sounding, but not places that actually exist. I love to learn, and often it comes th through just trying something, following my what-if curiosity. Often discoveries come from experimentation. It is scary to experiment because the potential for failure is high. But my naivete and stubbornness get me through it. And success, when it happens, is a huge reward. 
Sometimes I think about a series for years before working on it. The Anthropocene series is one of those. I had been meaning to make something with the roofing t slates that often fall, fall off my roof. I hate to waste things. I realized that if I made photograms of bones and plants on the slate, they would look like fossils. Finally, I had an idea and a technique that was perfect for it. I would create imaginary fossils of flora and fauna that might have lived in the imaginary landscapes of the borderlands images. The Anthropocene pieces are sculptures, and each one is unique. The photogram on stone is unique, the welded steel stand is unique, and then a rock as the base. I had to learn how to weld very small joints in eighth inch steel rod. It turned out to be the most difficult part of the whole project. So far, I've made about 75 of the photograms on slate, but only 11 of the welded steel stands. I enjoyed collecting the subjects. The ferns are, are a wonderful reference to the earliest photograms. The plants are inspired by Ernst Haeckel's illustration. If you're not familiar with his work, it's, I think he was 19th century, and uh, beautiful illustrations of natural objects. His name is H-A-E-C-K-E-L, and it's worth a Google. The bones and shells images are inspired by seeing fossils at the Dinosaur Park and the Florissant National Park in Colorado, where I researched real fossils. And finally, since I had the landscapes and the fossils, I expanded the project into uh, pictures that are records of the scientists and explorers who researched this imaginary history in my Sapien series. Using background images of real fossil beds from Colorado, I became curious about the people or beings that might discover this lost civilization perhaps 100,000 years from now. So I photographed the tools that might be used to discover my imaginary fossils. This series is a few one-of-a-kind amber types. That's a positive image made with collodion wet plate process on black glass. And here are a few of the behind-the-scenes pictures so you can see how I did them. I love to make things from pictures to woodworking to cooking to welding, gardening, to 3D printing, to making books. Creating stuff keeps me excited and engaged. And the satisfaction of seeing and holding something that I made is a huge reward. I take a crazy idea, plus curiosity, some restless hands, add in a splash of experimentation, and I come up with something, it's anything, a creation that's mine. I like to say yes to every crazy idea. If this work interests you, you can see more on my website. It's uh, billwest.com, and there are more pictures from these series and lots of others that go back a long way, and uh, all sorts of interesting concepts that are easy to research in the website. So if you have questions, I welcome you to email me, and I'm um, glad to answer them if I have an answer. So thanks again, LaVon, and uh, I look forward to the next uh, virtual photo salon and really look forward to when we can meet in real life. Bye now. Thank you, Bill, for that enlightening presentation. Loved hearing about your thought process and the fossils you found along the way. I hope everyone else enjoyed it as well. So please give it a thumbs up, leave comments, and subscribe to see our upcoming artists. Thank you all for tuning in. And the New York Virtual Photo Salon Committee, I'm LaVon Hall, and we'll see you soon with some more exciting speakers.